Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Moses Chelanga, counsel for the Deputy Governor of Siaya County, Mr. Dr. William Odwal, CPA. I'm told in Siaya those titles are very important to be noted. Mr. Speaker, sir, there was a lot of heavy weather that was made over a chair worth 1.2 million shillings. And there was an allegation or a charge against the governor on bulldozing, bullying, and I'm twisting procurement to ensure that that chair was purchased for his benefit. That particular charge, Mr. Speaker, sir, has been found by the committee to be unsubstantiated. And therefore, that drama before the committee, led by the Ebo Governor of El Girl, Marakwet, Mr. Kisang, it was a necessary drama. The committee found that the, the uh, deputy governor was in no way involved in the procurement process. And he was therefore acquitted in the manner of speaking of that particular charge. Mr. Speaker, I have had with the keen the deliberation by the members of this house about the relationship between the governor and the deputy governor. And during the committee, the deputy governor said that they had a very good camaraderie, good working relationship with his boss, senior counsel James Rengo, whom we hold in a very high regard, especially on this side of the divide whereby we practice law. And he made a very interesting remark that they used to put on marching suits. And uh, it was a comment that that is not our first time. We've had an interesting story of people putting on marching suits and it ends up into another quagmire. Mr. Speaker, I would just want to make two remarks. One is that the Deputy Governor has been found on the accounts of bullying, intimidation. That charge was substantiated. But at the same time, the committee found that this particular governor, or deputy governor, sorry, for that matter, interfered with procurement. On one side of the mouth, the committee says that the governor did not intimidate anyone, did not bully anyone, did not untruth anyone. Then on the other side, it says it in, he interfered with procurement. How does that sit before this particular house? How is that the integrity of that report? Because it is a house of record. And we will read it. Our children will read it. But we are subjected to debate in this house and the house before. After, sorry. So I would also want the, the, this full house to also consider that particular uh, recommendation by the house. It has been submitted also that this is a political process. Yes, it is. It is legal and political process. And I would like the chairman, I mean the speaker and the house to revisit the answer of 26 of June 2020. That is the re-impeachment of the governor of Kerenyaga then, uh, who is now the council of governor share person and Waguru. And once profound submissions that were made by our senior colleague, which incidentally is uh, also maybe is not a subject of these proceedings, but I'm just quoting it, is that Honorable Jim Zorengo, senior counsel, senator of CIA then, made remarks and said, and made a reference to the Bible, that the story of Erod and Erodia, and said that when Sal, uh, this beautiful girl who danced to the king, and the king asked, I can grant you anything you want. And then went to the mother of Herodia, and the Herodia said, I want the head of John the Baptist. But because the king had made that promise, the head had to be delivered. And that's how John the Baptist was beheaded. And my senior colleague made humble submissions that we know who wants the head of Anoe Guru. This house should make that profound vision. And I submit, we know who wants the head of James Odwal. In a platter. 
So in this case, I make and I submit that this House should vote in the negative for the impeachment of Senator William Woodward. Fi oh, no, sorry, 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 Mr. Speaker, Deputy Governor, Honorable William Woodward. Because politics happen. Harry Truman once said that in Washington politics, if you want a friend, get a dog. So there's no friendship. But you see, we should not sacrifice, we should not sacrifice our constitution for political expediency because the boss doesn't want his deputy, then we can throw him under the gallows. No. And the law is very clear. Submissions have been made before the committee. In this house, and even in the Supreme Court, in the case of Mike Mubisongo, highly the most recent case in the Supreme Court, they set out a threshold of impeachment. Gross violation. Not every violation is gross, and I'm sure the Speaker and the members will consider that. Finally, Mr. Speaker, is that on the issue of the role of governor and the deputy governor, which members have heavily made submission about it, is that this role needs to be submitted and uh, needs to be reviewed by you as honorable members of this House because it's your role to defend devolution. Because under Article 179, no one knows what is the role of the deputy governor. He's saying he's the deputy chief executive officer. Article 32, I think, says that you will do any other role that he may be assigned by the governor. And on this particular matter, there was a letter that the governor wrote to the chief officer of finance, instructing him to be, from time to time, be briefing the deputy governor on, those, on issues within that particular department. And in discharge of that particular responsibility, the deputy governor would, from time to time, ask briefing, make suggestions, ask for updates from the, 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 the Department of Finance, which includes procurement. How is that interference? So we should also ask the governor, did he write an illegal letter that he instructed his deputy governor to interfere with procurement, to interfere with finance docket? Then this impeachment should be a joint impeachment of the governor and the deputy governor. That is why you need, as this house, I implore you to have a policy decision on way going forward. And I told the committee about a political joke in the US that what is the role of a deputy governor? He says, what is the role of a deputy governor? It's a joke in a political circle that say, he wakes up in the morning, reads the newspaper, check if the governor is alive or dead. If he's not dead, then goes back to sleep. Because that is the role. So at least uh, going forward, on behalf of all the deputy governors, we would also ask that this becomes a policy decision. And finally, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that I think Honorable Buru made a very profound uh, statement that he tried to intervene. And I think also when we stop talking, we start fighting. As a country going forward, I think it is important also for this House to provide a way of mediating political disputes instead of going to impeachment. And I'm very much aware, but when there's a dispute between the House and the National Assembly, there's always a mediation committee. Maybe as a way forward, as a policy reform, I would recommend that also uh, there would be a way of an alternative dispute resolution other than drawing swords on each other. So that I yield to my colleague, Mr. Barraza, to make one comment on this, and then we'll close our submission to allow you to retire and make a vote. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your time. Mr. Speaker and the senators in the House, I'll address two issues. One is the issue whether the threshold for removal of the deputy governor has been met, and then 